In February of this year, Dina Pugliese announced to the world, I'm tired and I want to sleep. <laughs> and we all understood. Dina, all the best to Alex and your family. Love you. Absolutely love you. So we, we had her goodbye. It was one of the most extraordinary shows I've ever been a part of. And then Monday came for us. New time. Uh, questions about the short-term BT and long-term, both externally and some internal questions. You hear, you hear things. You hear things. Uh, let's talk about the short-term and things that were solidified for me, things I already knew. Devo Brown's one of the best broadcasters in Canada. <laughs> Tammy Sutherland is one of the best broadcasters in the country. <laughs> Frank Ferragini is one of the best broadcasters in the country. <laughs> Stephanie Henry is one of the best broadcasters in the country. <laughs> now, I don't know if you noticed, we produce four hours of live TV a day throughout the week. Now, 30 minutes... Not an hour, not intermissions, and I love me some intermissions. Four hours live, led by Kevin Furchette, our supervising producer, between our news team and our production team. This is the best team in Canadian television. On top of that, give yourselves a round of applause. Right? <laughs> You're allowed, and they're very polite as well. Couple all that with your support. We're still the number one morning show in the country, and we want to thank you for that. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. So, long term, how do we elevate that further? That's where the search came in for a new co-host. Really, it wasn't complicated what we were looking for here. Talent, experience, an amazing personality, someone who can fit in with us and someone who can fit in with you. And boss Laura, Laura Ryder, the work she put into this search, I want to acknowledge Laura Ryder, where's Laura? I want to acknowledge the work she did on this. Because it was, it was overwhelming the amount of people that threw their, their hat in the ring, and obviously I want to protect the names of the innocent, but you know who you are. Thank you very much for giving us your time. This was not easy. This was a lot of talent that were stepping forward here. But after every conversation, after every audition, after every meeting, we kept coming back to the same person. Stupidly talented, amazing personality, experienced. She's gonna fit in here and you're gonna love her at home. Ladies and gentlemen, we found her. We found her. Months and months and months of searching was needed for this, but I am elated to announce to you, the new co-host of Breakfast Television is Meredith Shaw. Take a look at this. It has not been a normal journey. It definitely has been unique. It started off with just my complete love of music. I grew up wanting to be Sarah McLaughlin, Jen Arden, um, Cheryl Crow. I grew up in that little affair era, so I started writing songs. Um, and then from there, I got totally enamored with where those songs got played on the radio. And then I always watched television and Marilyn Dennis and Deanie Petty and I just, I always had a desire to connect. Um, it started with a song, and uh, it's ended with a show. <laughs> My dad and I were in his car listening to a Celine Dion album, and I was singing it at the top of my lungs. I was probably eight, nine maybe, and I remember him thinking, <laughs> or saying to me like, whoa, like you're, you're Selening right now, like you're singing. And, uh, and I remember him being impressed with that. And, you know, nice to impress your dad. So I think I, I felt in that moment like, oh, maybe I, I mean, I'm not Celine, that's for sure. But maybe, maybe I could follow this a little further. meet Rodney Bowers. Man, the guy that changed my whole life. Well, we were, yeah, I was, I was emceeing an event and he was there chefing it up. And uh, I just remember him saying Meredith Shaw. And I turned around and I'm like, oh, there's that cute chef from TV. <laughs> 
I knew he was the right one very early on. I mean, very early on. They always say that, right? When you know, you know. And I always thought, really? <laughs> Uh, but you do, and I did. And, um, you know, he, he is his own ecosystem. And I had never met my match before, uh, and I did with him. And of course, he brought with him two beautiful children. I certainly uh, grew up at a time where there was no word curvy. I was just a bigger girl, I was tall, I, I didn't ever really feel like I fit. And certainly when I was started to pursuing the music industry and then even when I was modeling, there were some tough, tough things said my way that really made me become smaller in every sense of that word. Uh, and it didn't work. <laughs> it, it doesn't work. Um, when you become less of who you are, uh, the world does not benefit from that. And so style really became my superpower. It became my language. It became the thing that unlocked my potential and my possibility. And I love doing that for other people. And so that, it was just a switch. My body size didn't change, my mind changed. And I think that's really it. No matter your size, we all experience um, some disconnect between who we are and our bodies. And it's been, I think style has been a very powerful tool for me to be able to connect those two and really affirm who you are. And so I think style is the access to the possibility of who you are. And that's why I'm so obsessed with it. I am so ready and I, ah, I'm gonna get emotional. This is a dream come true. And I take this opportunity so seriously and we're gonna have so much fun. And I just, I am so grateful. <clears throat> and I'm so ready. Great! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank welcome. You. <laughs>